two on a Friday. This is The Herd. Wherever you may be and however you may be listening, we are live in Los Angeles. iHeart Radio, Fox Sports Radio, and FS1. Joy Taylor is joining me for hour two. We have a packed hour. Albert Breer, coaching updates, coaching moves. Inside NFL stuff, Eric Dickerson, Greg Jennings, and Jason McIntyre last hour. Joy, how are you? I, I am just stewing because I have a great story for you in Herdline News. The bottom of the hour. You do? I do. I'm not going to give you any hints. It's just all about you, and you're going to love it. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. <laughs> you, you should be so excited. You can't do I, I am so excited. It's called a tease. You do it all the time. So I'm taking advantage of this moment. I have, I, it is must-watch. I'm not going to go on. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. <laughs> no, don't, you don't, want a hint? Don't, don't, don't. You want no, one no, small no, hint? No, 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 no. Okay. All right, let's just that make that's fun. It's really good. Okay. All right, you know, listen. I do the Blazing Five all year, and I stop it at the end of uh, the regular season because, you know, I get to pick five games out of like 15 or 16. When you only have three or four games, I wouldn't generally bet all these games. But there is a game I love this weekend, and I'll let you figure it out by the keywords I often use when I pick these games. But I, I thought we'd do it. Let's go Blazing Five with four games. Here we go. That's a hot one. Let's blaze it up. Fire it up. It's Collins blazing fire. Cold set Chiefs. Chiefs minus five and a half off a of bye at home with Andy Reid. I'm going to take Kansas City to win the game. Listen to the first team to average 35 points per game for a season since Denver did it with Peyton Manning. Now the Colts are hotter, but Kansas City's offense is first in virtually everything. And the Colts defense, although it's a great story, has not faced a top 10 scoring offense since week five when the Patriots lit them up. I think a lot of this Colts defensive story has been situational. They haven't faced great offenses. Darius Leonard's outstanding, but they still have lots of needs on the defensive side. Um, I think luck may outplay Holmes. It is cold. It is snowy. I do not like dome teams on the road in cold, snowy games. I'm going to take Kansas City here, 31-24, to to win and cover the spread. Cowboys and Rams. Uh, Cowboys plus seven and a half. They got the better defense. They're playing with house money. They've got the better momentum. They've won eight of nine. Let's not lie here. Since Amari Cooper showed up, it's a pretty darn good offense. And their defense, and again, they faced real offenses this year. Their defense has been up to the task. Cowboys defense hasn't allowed 25 points to any of the top five offenses they've faced this year. So when they face the Drew Breeses, they have delivered. By the way, the Rams defense when has it been good and i don't think todd Gurley's healthy we're still talking about todd i don't think he's healthy and i still think they miss cooper cup i think sean mcveigh off a bye has some explosive dynamic play calls to catch the cowboys a little off guard and take a lead and in the nfl playoffs you get a lead you win like 75 percent of the time but there's no way i'm not taking seven and a half points with the cowboys I think the Rams take a lead in this game and hold on for dear life. But I'm going to take the Rams to win 30-26, but absolutely Cowboys to cover. Chargers at Patriots. Like New England at minus four? I love New England at minus four. Okay, first of all, Phillip Rivers, last three games, gotten beat up a little. I think he looks a little fatigued. I think the running backs were a little beat up. In the last three games for the Chargers, Phillip Rivers' passer rating's 55. They're averaging 18 a game and about 240 yards. The Patriots are 11-1 after a playoff by Bill Belichick era. Undefeated at home this year. Only undefeated team. Listen, the Chargers have been getting... You face Baltimore two times in three or four weeks. You are banged up. They're a little banged up. They got to travel 10,000 miles in the last two weeks, last three weeks. I think New England controls this game. They're efficient. It's a frustrating game for the Chargers, who have better players. But I'll take uh, the Patriots to win in cover, 28-23, maybe even a little worse. Eagles at Saints. All right. Listen, everybody loves the Saints. And my guess is the Saints drop a 30-burger. But I think Philadelphia's offense is potent. Uh, they're five and one straight up as an underdog. They've been great situationally. I get eight and a half points. I'm taking that all day. Nick Foles' is passer rating in the playoffs is 105. They're three and one against top ten scoring offenses. 
Listen, the Saints defense, it's not an easy defense to run on. But you can throw the ball on this team. Alshon Jeffrey, Zach Ertz, Nelson Aguilar, Golden Tate, a very good offensive line. We've got an excellent coach and a quarterback who's good in these spots. I think this game is a lot closer than people think. I, I do expect New Orleans to, to be able to move the football. But come on, you don't bet teams, you bet numbers. Philadelphia plus eight, I'm taking it all day. Eagles cover, Saints win a super competitive game, 24 to 20. So again, blazing five, these are my picks. Kansas City, Dallas, New England, Philly. New England's my favorite pick. Dallas is my second favorite pick. I'll just say that right there. Okay, I, I want to talk about this for a second. This is pretty amazing. Dallas is the first playoff team. This is really amazing. Without a starter over 30 years old in 31 years. And you would think that would guarantee that you're going to be really good. But I don't think it guarantees anything, and I'll tell you why. I think when Kansas City plays Indianapolis this weekend, you're going to see mostly the future of the AFC for the time being. Um, I think both the Chiefs and the Colts have a great coach. Very, 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 very good transformational quarterback talents, excellent front offices, and good home field edges. I think Kansas City and Indianapolis and the AFC, you're going to see a lot of. I think in the AFC, you've got a lot of dysfunctional teams. Jacksonville, Miami, Buffalo, Cincy, Oakland, Cleveland. you got a lot of bad quarterbacks. Even quarterbacks that are okay, Lamar Jackson and Marcus Mariota, do we really, really buy them long-term? Pittsburgh and uh, the New England Patriots have Hall of Fame quarterbacks, but they're old and going to retire pretty soon. I think the AFC is going to be led. I know what the AFC is going to look like for the next eight years. You're going to see a lot of Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes, and you're going to see a lot of Frank Reich and Andy Lo uh, Andrew Locke. You're going to see a lot of that. The NFC, I got news for you. I don't know what I'm going to see for the next five years. Dallas has the best young roster, but they're limited at quarterback. Philadelphia has maybe the best combination of, if Carson Wentz is healthy, owner, GM, coach, and quarterback. Uh, the Los Angeles Rams have a lot of money, new stadium, free agent destination, and they certainly have the GM, the quarterback, and the coach, right? The Chicago Bears have my, my vote for the coach of the year. So they got the coach right. And that defense is not only loaded, it's a bunch of kids. And they're, they're not, except for Khalil Mack, you're not paying those guys much. Green Bay's got Aaron Rodgers. I'm not giving up on Russell Wilson and Pete Carroll. They usually figure it out and end up as a playoff team. And, I, and I've told you this before, I think San Francisco is going to be a thorn for the Rams. When Jimmy Garoppolo comes back and Kyle Shanahan, I think they're going to win that division at least every other year for the next 10 years. Not to mention the Vikings, the Saints, and the Carolina you know, Carolina's got Cam and Ron Rivera, and they got good Luke Geekly, and the Saints have Drew and Sean, and they, Mickey Loomis drafts well. Uh, you know, I didn't mention Atlanta, Minnesota. You got real players there. So the NFC, you've got bigger cities, more revenue, better free agent markets except for Green Bay, more competitive, better quarterbacks, better organizations. In the AFC, I got a lot of dysfunction. I got a lot of bad owners. I got a lot of bad quarterbacks. I got a lot of bad cultures. The, the Cowboy talent is remarkable. I mean, it really is. First playoff team without a starter over 30 in 30, 31 years. It is an incredibly special team. But I don't think it guarantees anything in the NFC. It's sometimes When you compare the NFC to the AFC, uh, AFC is kind of dysfunctional. There's a lot of junk in the AFC. It's not a lot of junk. I think the Bruce Arians higher in Tampa because I think Tampa's kind of junk in the NFC. I think they write that ship. I think they're pretty competitive next year. I think Bruce Arians, Jameis Winston, Todd Bowles, they'll kind of they got a good roster. I think Tampa next year will be a real tough out. And maybe you could argue the same in the AFC with Cleveland, with Baker and Dorsey and their roster. They're going to be a tougher out. I think they will be. But I know what the AFC is going to look like. It's going to be a lot of Andrew Luck and Patrick Mahomes for the next 10 years. I guarantee that. Coach, front office, quarterback, I guarantee that. No idea what, I don't even know what the NFC East looks like next year. Seriously, I have no idea about the NFC. If, they, if the Giants figure out the quarterback thing, Saquon Barkley, Shermer, the offensive guy, OBJ, watch out. All right, coming up next, Albert Breer stops by. Uh, the very latest on some of this coaching stuff. The Bengals are going to hire... Uh, 
Zach Taylor. Uh, uh, high school kid. What? Oh, Zach Taylor? How old is he? 18? I, I don't know. I don't know how old he 